Welcome everybody to the next episode of Cat Vista Clips. Today we have Andrew from Fusion. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent. Thanks. Going well. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, I'm I'm excited to to get into into Fusion because it's um it's two companies, two opportunities coming together. Um, that's really really exciting. But before we jump into what Fusion is doing, what I like to to do and what I think you know, sets these, you know, interviews apart is that we get to understand the personality aspect behind the pitch deck. We get to understand who the team is, what their experiences are, their story. So, you know, if we can start, tell us about you and tell us about the team and their expertise and how they got to this point. Um, I grew up on a cropping and grazing property, um, not the normal sort of process, cutting edge, all sorts of things. I've always been looking for something different to do. Um, I set up a corporatised agribusiness back in the late 80s, early 90s that was across four states with eight enterprises. Um, the investors who were overseas and high net worths decided they wanted to exit. Um, we left there and for the last 20 years, they're about I've been involved in business development for businesses who are... Uh, yeah, they're looking to grow, be it internally with debt or with joint ventures, other sorts of agreements, be it debt or equity, um, involved in chairing advisory boards, uh, non-executive director in some that we've invested into, um, been involved in software development. Um, and over that time, probably the last 20 years, probably three or 400 businesses I've had some insights and developed into as to how they grow and why they fail and what part of success looks like. But all the way along on the on the backside of that has been what are the inputs into farm production businesses and what ends up on your fork that you put in your mouth. And yeah, that's been a passion of mine and it's it's a passion of the other guys in the business. There's three others in the business as well. Um, Alan grew up in a cropping grazing business, his family farm as well, and became an agronomist. He set up the pyrethrins business industry here in Victoria, and it was so successful they had to shut it down because they couldn't keep up with the production, which was an interesting insight is that, yeah, not much point producing a product if you haven't got an end market. Um, he's a grain and hay trader and has been involved in plant and soil nutrition for 20 odd years as well across three states. Um, Peter's the, the micro green side of the business. Um, he originally grew up in a, a Greek restaurant business and traveled the world as a chef through Europe, came back to Australia, did a bit more and then ran a half a million dollar, million bird poultry business for a number of years. Um, got out of that and then has been producing microgreens for seven years. John, um, yeah, an interesting character, has been involved in remote agriculture in Western Queensland. He was involved with international tourism, his family business of meat processing, um, and has been involved in sports management as well before starting his garlic business 10 years ago. So collectively, there's a very broad range of skills and understanding about food production, but why people buy and what they're looking for and how that market has shifted really very much since COVID. It's been an interesting way of, of looking at it. But yeah, passionate group of guys. I'm the common denominator in the sense that there were two businesses. I was involved with both of them. And then through some discussions, we realised there was a real synergy um, between the two and what we could benefit for both businesses from the skill set, but also the production and marketing and a, a low impact value adding system that we've developed. Okay, brilliant. So we'll get into to, um, Fusion itself, but but talk about the two underlying opportunities and how it's coming together so our audience can understand, well, what is Fusion? What does that mean and what does it entail? Because there's essentially two businesses that are being merged brought together um they're both operating businesses they're both both growing really you know so so tell us about that 
Okay, the certified garlic side of the business um, is an interesting one. And the, the challenge for garlic growing is that 25% of this year's crops are required for the seed for next year. So it's not like many bis ag businesses where you can scale very quickly and it's become restrictive in a way. So the market is about the hobby farmers, the small growers who go to farmers markets. And then at the other end, you've got the major suppliers going direct to the supermarket. So there's a middle ground that isn't being met, that people are demanding a product of, of quality, but they can't get it. And so they're frustrated, so they begin importing. The microgreens business, similarly, many of the microgreens businesses are hydroponics, indoor, artificial light, whereas this business is soil grain, rainwater and sunlight. And production is nearly double what the hydroponic system is and businesses in the food service sector are coming saying top quality, top colour, top flavour and the shelf life's longer. And we want to buy 10 times our current order. Can't supply you. When will you? And so my associated with both businesses said, what's next for them? How do we, how do they actually fund their growth to meet the demand? And how do the, the customers see value? From out of, out of our work and some of the research I've been doing, the critical market for these two businesses is about food trust. Um, we don't visibly see it. Uh, about $60 billion worth of wine is fake in the world trade. You don't know what's in the label. is not what's in the, inside the glass or the package. In Australia, excluding or including wine, we're, we're, it's costing us in excess of $3 billion in contamination and substitution. So part of what we, the market has been saying to us is we trust your business and what you do and grow. So we're looking at how can we take that to the next level? So they're both certified organic. We're looking at high nutritional testing. So we're saying, okay, what's really in the package that you're buying? Uh, where's the proof of provenance? Where was it actually grown? How was it actually grown? Can you prove that? Is it somebody independent that can verify for us that you are doing as you say? And so also transparent production systems. And so while they've been growing separately, there's been, as an outsider in both businesses originally, there was, okay, you're both doing the same things for the same outcomes with the same benefits and then with the value adding that can take place, hey, that's the same stuff and the end market for the value adding is similar and it's at a higher value, why aren't we working together? And so that's what brought everybody together from that perspective. Um, the micro, yeah, I really struggled growing up on a broad acre grain property where we talk tonnes per hectare. Garlic is kilograms per metre of row and microgreens is grams per square metre. And you sort of, how do I get my head around doing the numbers and making this work from a scalability perspective? And so we, the microgreens are growing a, a crop every seven, 21, uh, 14 or 21 days, whereas the garlic's an annual crop. So we've got two complementary businesses, higher cash flow, higher capital appreciation with the crop as, as we're expanding the garlic. So again, a very complementary process from an investor perspective, very complementary from funding and cash flowing, the collaboration of the businesses as well. Um, yeah. From a, a volume, within garlic, we import about 89% of the garlic that's consumed. Um, Sadly, a large proportion of that is not what you're buying in the jar or the packet. It's uh, suspect production or contaminated with foreign products that are hidden in what you're buying. Uh, the microgreens business is, again, is a hobby side of things or internally grown. And, yeah, really find my head difficult is we're going to be reaching sort of 50 million grams or 50 million, 50 tonnes of microgreens a year being produced out of the new facility. Um, and yet we can't keep up. That won't meet demand. So let's use that as the first stage because there's more to come.
Okay. So this is an exciting opportunity. Anybody who is passionate about um, agriculture and can understand that there's um, you know, there's always going to be an increased demand. And like you said, the quality and making sure you know where um, your produce is coming from. Um, you know, if you look at the big supermarkets, they they um, promote that everything is Australian grown and everything they supply, you know, it's it's they know where it's coming from, which is which is fantastic. Um, and it's and it's being driven by, you know, the the, the bigger players. Um and that's probably, you know, coming back from from the, you know, consumer sentiment that they want to know where, you know, where their produce is coming from, that, you know, it is that they're buying what they say they're buying, right? So you're in a space that the demand is there, the demand is growing. And like you said, that the the your 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 um your your buyers are are demanding you increase production. They want more, they want more, they want more 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 so from an investor's point of view that's attractive that not only is is the consumer segment and and the, the voice of the consumer saying that they agree with what you're doing that the people buying it from you they want more um that you're producing so it's it's an interesting proposition and and the fact that you're you're merging two businesses that complement each other um that aren't falling into the same sort of um well with with you know agriculture you know, especially like the garlic business, that it's 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 very you know it takes a year to 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 achieve you know um, revenues because you've got to you've got to grow it twelve months in in, in events um, that you're complementing both, so you're you're you know reducing the the cash flow risks, um, yeah. which is which is which is interesting. So so tell me about the raise and then what's it being used for? What does the next twelve months look like if you were to successfully raise today? Expansion, obviously. Um, the microgreens, flowers, herbs business, we're looking at acquiring a, a property, building a greenfields infrastructure there, um, designing to... Um, we only found out yesterday, which was through a spanner in the works, that we've got somebody who'll take the whole lot. We haven't even gone to market. And Peter was talking to him about something and expanding... And he said, well, whatever you're going to produce, I'll take whatever you can grow. And he said, oh, we're talking serious numbers. We can take whatever you can grow. Don't worry about it. So that's the that's the major, that's about 41% of our raise. 38% or thereabouts goes into equipment and fit outs for that and the, the value adding system. Um, and the remaining 20%, 21% is about operation systems, IP protection, putting together some of the industry four components that we're using as part of managing the businesses better and verifying a whole heap of processes. Um, the microgreens business, we just did some calcs a couple of months ago that said we're going to do, produce something like 500 million data points of information. What are we going to do with it? Uh, yeah, okay, so we're now talking to somebody in the AI sector saying, Okay, yeah, we can analyse it. What do you want from it? How can you make better decisions? Similarly, but in a different scale, the same with the, the micro, with the with the garlic operation as well. So, yeah, some robotics coming in. Um, so it's not just if you like people see organic ag as going back in history and time to doing something traditionally in the past. We've dragged that into the present, but we're also dragging in new technology to to take that to people to gain better understanding of what we're doing. Go and buy your product, scan the codes, see who's grown it, where is it grown in, which state of Australia, whose farm, what did they produce, yep. and learn a little bit about the product that's in the pack. And yep. that's our differentiation really about that. Um, we're independently certifying DNA as to where crops are grown so that, yeah, I've had clients who've had food substituted with brilliant packaging in overseas markets and they haven't even started harvesting their crop and it's for sale. How do you prove that's not your product and things yep. like that? Yeah. Yep. It's okay. really, it's an exciting space. It's a frustrating space. Um, and customers, although at the moment we're all talking about cost of living, 
there's a, a change in the way people are looking at what they consume. It's not just to fill themselves up with with bulk stuff. It's about how do I maintain my health and my integrity? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that's part of, you know, as I said, the food trust aspect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's what's the number that you are raising? And then can you share some of the milestones about the businesses themselves? So, you know, the growth figures, the revenues, that sort of thing. Okay, we'll go to microgreens. Um, it's unique. It's the only certified microgreen producer in Australia. It's soil grown. It's using rainwater and it's using sunlight. So there's no unnatural products. Production compared to the industry standards is nearly double. And even so, we still can't keep up with the production. So, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a challenging space, and the frustration of phone calls constantly coming in. We want this. I want to double my order. No, I'll have four times that this week and ten times in six weeks' time, please. Can't do it. How do we how do we get over that? Um, I was involved, we had two chances of taking out other businesses and they fell over for various reasons. And so we decided rather than taking over an existing legacy issue, let's build something that's really fit for purpose because we're looking at them going on in one aspect from that into the biocidical space. So we need to make sure that our QA systems, our biosecurity for that whole facility when we build it has to meet those medical type standards. The garlic side of it is how do we grow it? I mean, we could we could sell 250, 500 tonnes of it tomorrow, but how do we scale to that at a, at a sensible pace, but at the same time still maintain the integrity? So we're not buying property. In that business, we're engaging with existing horticultural businesses. Here's the recipe. We'll monitor it. We'll look after it. We'll guarantee you a a product sale at the end of your, your time growing for us. So, yes, different systems, different options as to where we go, but both of them are now going to be looking at doing the, the value-adding side of the business will be in one facility um, because they both use the same technologies and techniques that we've developed to take that to the market, food market for a start before We've got some more R and D yet to do for the product for the production mm. for the biocidicals and engaging with a few international companies as to what we can do for them. And that goes back to we've got all this proof of how we do things, how we grow things, what the nutritional profile is. Alan and I looked at one stage at a new horticultural crop and we thought it's only going to be available for four weeks. We're going to flood the market, no point. Can we freeze it? Loss of nutrition. What if we juice it? Oh, even more loss of nutrition. What if we powder it? Oh, it's just coloured, flavoured. It's got nothing in it. Yeah. And that was the driver from our perspective that we looked at what's going on. And so I went overseas, did a couple of trips, looked at what the market was doing with some of that technology. Um, finding out where international markets were at and why they were choosing products and we were blind taste testing products from seven countries to see what the difference was and yeah, what the flavour profiles were. Um, and it's like wine. I mean, you can grow different, the same variety of, of wine plant in different locations, you get a different outcome. Mm. And what does the market want from that is no different than either garlic or or microgreens as well. So this, the flowers interest me in the sense that I could give you a flower, close your eyes, taste this, and you would taste another plant that is totally unrelated. It's a fruit, but you're tasting a plant. So we're looking at, at flavour, natural flavour profiles that we can produce for people in a similar way, at a similar, similar value to something like saffron, um, what the market's paying for there. So... Yeah, exciting for the growth side of things, yeah. Okay, brilliant. And then, yep, finally, how much how much are you raising? We're looking for $10 million for around 70% of the business. Um, it's, a, it's a different process from that perspective. Some people have, in the past, we were nearly engaged by pre-COVID and our investors have now gone into the 50, 100 million 
market. We had one bloke came back and said, look, I'll give you 25 million. And I said, we can't really do you justice because we, we can waste the money. We can't invest it wisely. So we're back in the market having now reconfigured the business model, the growth model and the market model um, to create a, a de-risk, better de-risk process, process, I suppose you could look at it. And um, we're, yeah, we're really excited about where we're going and, and what the potential is without, again, going to the market saying, hey, <laughs> you haven't heard of us before, but here's what's going on. Yeah. Okay. And, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I'll leave it there. I won't take up too much more of your time, but this right. is an exciting opportunity for anybody who's interested in the ag tech space. Um, if you have watched this video and you want to find out more, I'll put the details below um, and I can connect you directly to Andrew and he'll be able to, to walk you through the opportunity and um, you can meet the team um, behind this, this, this business. Um, but you know, again, I'll put the, the, the details for the opportunity below. Um, you can head to our website to find out more. Um, but thank you very much for jumping on with us, Andrew. It was great to chat. I'm excited to see where this is, where, where this goes. You know, agriculture is, is something that's going to be around forever. Um, as the, the population, um, you know, increases, the demand is always going to be there. So it's, it's an exciting business without, without, um, agriculture without farmers, the world stops. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you very much. It's good to chat. Mm.